I have never heard of Imago 320 before, but let's see what it looks like. I wanted to do some more film comparisons to Tri-X like I began earlier in the year. But to keep things consistent, rather than do them every now and then, I went ahead and got 49 different film stocks, everything I could get in 35mm from B&H and Freestyle. So unless they were out of stock, I got a roll of it. Now if this part of the video seems familiar, it's because I'm using this portion of the video for all 49 of them rather than record it 49 times. So if you want to skip ahead to the H and D curves or the prints, time codes are right over here. For those of you that haven't seen this part of the video before, here's what I've done. So I wanted to use each film with the exact same shot, which is a headshot of me with a Kodak Gray Card Plus, which happens to have a red, blue, and green patch, a cyan, magenta, yellow patch, and then a dark and a neutral flesh tone. Then, with those shots taken, I bracketed every shot in third of a stop so that we can make sure we have a negative of equal shadow density to the base target film of Tri-X. Now, the reason I use Tri-X is because it's just been around for a long time and it's a very popular film. So it's a good base film to compare everything to. Then, once everything was developed, which was developed in D76 at stock for the manufacturer's recommended time, I printed everything on Ilford using the exact same aperture, contrast settings, developer, and everything. The only thing I changed was my exposure time, and that was to make sure that I compensated for any base fog variation from one film stock to another. Other than that, everything was left the same so that we can have a comparison of just the qualities of the film. Now there's going to be some uh, differences in contrast, especially on the high end, and that's because the manufacturers getting their development time may not have used the same target that Kodak used for Tri-X. And that's okay. We're not looking at the overall contrast for everything. What we're really looking at is grain characteristics, uh, tonality, how the film treats the shadows versus the highlights, that sort of thing. And uh, we're looking at spectral sensitivity, thus the gray card plus rather than just a regular gray card. So we're going to go ahead and look at H and D curves, which if you saw one of my earlier videos on sensitometry, I like to use pen and paper and make my graphs. However, my wife was really, really ready to make sure I was done with this project. So she put everything into a spreadsheet for you all. So even though I don't like them, I want to show them to you thanks to her. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the prints side by side with the same print made from Tri-X. And from there, you can decide if you like the film and if you want to go and use it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the curves and then we'll go to the prints. We can see the Imago 320 in red, Tri-X in blue. And it's a very good straight line portion film through there. And it gives us about the same toe curve as Tri-X. We get pretty much box speed 320 uh, with this film. And the straight line portion should give us a pretty good tonal rendition and good even tonal separation. Now the line overall is a little bit flatter. That's just a lower contrast and can be adjusted with a little bit longer development time than what the camera manufacturer gave me. Of course, your methods may vary, but overall on paper, it's a pretty good chart. So let's go ahead and look at the prints and see if they show just as good as the graph does. Here we have Tri-X 400 and here Imago 320. Now I did get a 320 speed from this film as advertised in order to get minimum shadow density in the film compared to Tri-X at 400. So overall speed as advertised. Now we can see our whites and just our general highlights are a bit dull and flat. 
Uh, that would be more of a development time issue. So using the manufacturer's time, it came out a little too low. So I would, in the future, if I were to shoot this film again and use D76 stock, I would develop a little bit longer than recommended. All right, let's look at some general features. The overall spectral sensitivity is equal to Tri-X. I don't find any hot spots in any of the uh, squares or patches of the gray card plus. So that's good. That means we have a true panchromatic response as we would expect from a black and white film. The overall tonality is good, although slightly underdeveloped. If I had to guess, and this is only a guess, uh, this may be Kodak 5022 movie film. It's not marked as such, so it could be something completely different. Maybe this is Kentmere 400. I don't know. Um, probably not, and I'll explain why when we get in a little bit closer. Uh, however, the edge does not have the Kodak 5022 mark on it like we saw with Cinestill and Cat Labs. Both of those are clearly marked Kodak. Uh, this is not. So overall, I think we got a pretty good print. Let's go ahead and zoom in and take a look at the fine details, grain, and so forth to see how they differ. All right, immediate pr impression of grain. It is actually fairly close to Tri-X, which is why I know it's not a FOMA film. For one, our 400 speed FOMA films have an extended red sensitivity. We didn't see that. And we have a much smaller grain. If you go back and review the Kentmere 400 video, you'll see that the grain in that film is also more pronounced. So this could be an Ilford film. It could be a Kodak film. I don't think it's either a um, Foma or Kentmere. All right, so overall tonality looks pretty good going from black to the grays of my forehead. Uh, it is a little dull, but like I said, that's a function of development time and could be corrected. We are getting our 320 speed film response, uh, so we're not losing the detail in this portion of the shadows. Uh, if we had underexposed, we would lose. All right, let's look at the shoulder. All right, here we are getting the fine detail of little fuzzy edge of my shoulder as it um, sets up against the background. We're getting a good shot of the uh, grain characteristics in that medium tone background. So picking up quite a bit of detail. You can see the texture of the shirt is pretty good. So nice sharp detail in those little features. Here in the shirt, we are seeing good sharp detail in the texture of the color. We're seeing the seam along the shoulder and the texture of the fabric come out nice and clear, so not obstructed by any sort of grain. Uh, we are not getting any sort of soft grain effect, so good sharp detail as I would expect. And here with the skin tone, again, we're getting pretty good uh, texture and detail in the skin. Tonality, eh, it's a little flat, I've already said. It's a little low on development time. So if you want those bright, crisp highlights, determine your own personal development time. Don't necessarily go by the manufacturer's recommendation. And that should be said for just about every film. So summary, decent film. Uh, you're going to get pretty good grain, uh, comparable to Tri-X smoother, smaller than Foma and Kentmere. You'll have to judge the price comparison and that one third speed loss compared to Kentmere, but you are getting one to two thirds stop faster than Foma. Overall, good performance. It's a good film. You're not going to go wrong using it. 
All right, that is it for this week. Thank you for watching. If you would like to help support this channel, you can subscribe to my Patreon. You can get lab towels, prints, t-shirts, and so forth in the links down in the description. Thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.